Hello, everybody. So as I've mentioned before, during COVID lockdown, I started getting into doing video. One of the things that I found that was challenging in the video was mainly the sound because the sound microphones on the cameras are not that good. They, they just, they pick up a lot of wind noise. They pick up a lot of echoing. And to get them loud enough, when you crank them up on the camera, you get quite a loud hiss with them. So to make it a little bit better, I went out and I got some external microphones so that my sound sounded a lot better. The first one that I bought was the Tackstar. And the Tackstar is a shotgun microphone. It comes with the foam windsock that goes over it to help to reduce the wind noise a little bit more. It has a power button on the side of it. It has a plus 10 dB um, gain on it. So it does increase the sound a little bit before it sends it to the camera. So it helps the camera so it's not amplifying the sound because a lot of the in-camera amplifiers are really, really bad. So the, this one actually has a plus 10 dB gain. It also has uh, adjustments so that you can enhance the bass or reduce the high end on it if you turn on this switch. It's supposed to help to get rid of echoes. It's supposed to help to get rid of some wind noise. It does a little bit, but it doesn't do a ton. But this was the first one that I uh, bought and I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved it so much that I went out and I bought another one and I got, it's the same one identical to this, but I also bought a uh, dead cat that goes on it. And this is to help reduce the wind noise even more. And when I bought this, this was just amazing how much it reduced the sudden Alberta wind noise and how much it enhanced the quality of my recordings. The problem that I found with both of these was when I was using them in a room like this, which is a very small room, it's got a ceiling under eight feet tall. It's probably about six feet wide and maybe 12 or 14 feet long. And there's not a lot in here to absorb the noise that when I use these in this room, they were quite echoey. And as much as I loved them for being outside, as much as I loved them for doing uh, recordings of nature and sounds and stuff like a vehicle driving down gravel or me walking on uh, a, for a real cold snow and getting that crunch noise and everything. And they work great for that. Inside, they just did not work just uh, where, as much as I wanted. So I went out and I bought a lapel microphone that also has a transmitter to it. So in this video, I'm not going to go through all the technical stuff about these two mics, but I'm going to tell you what I have found with them. So the first one I want to talk about is the Tackstar. Um, like I say, for being outside, it's a great one, but I'm going to show you what it's like to record inside with it. Now, the way I've got my studio set up right now is I have my camera, which is approximately six feet away from where my desk is. Behind the camera, I have a light that's lighting the scene. And right now I am using my Boya wireless microphones. I'm going to put on this tack star and let you hear the difference in why I went with a different microphone for being inside. All right, so I haven't moved my camera. I put on the tack star. I have all the, uh, the plus 10 dB gain is on. And I also have the, what's supposed to reduce some of the echo in the room. My camera is still the same distance away. It hasn't moved. The only thing I did do is I did increase the sound level on my camera a little bit through my computer. And the reason being is, is because the wireless microphone that I'm wearing that I was using previous has a more of an amplification uh, process to it and I can turn it up a lot louder so I can turn my camera down so in this setup here I up the volume just a little bit or the gain just a little bit on the camera and I am doing the exact same distance and everything and as much as the microphone works wonderful outside you can hear the echo inside so now what I did was I went and I moved my camera closer it's currently about three feet away from me. It's still got the Tackstar um, microphone on it. There's nothing that I've changed on it. Um, I'm looking at my levels and my levels are a little bit higher obviously because it is closer. 
but it's not to the point where it's I have to adjust anything. I still have to bring this lens or this microphone up a little bit more in the gain than I would with the lapel mics and it's a little bit clear in sound. Now the problem that I had with it is, is because it's so close to me when I'm teaching it just doesn't give me the room to move around like the lapel mic did. So I did as much as I love this microphone for what I was using it for outside. For inside I found that it just didn't have what I wanted. So that's where I went and I bought this Boya wireless microphone. And this thing is absolutely amazing. Uh, it comes with a transmitter and it comes with a receiver. Now, the nicest thing about it is, is that you can see the microphone here on my lapel and it plugs into here and then this plugs into the camera. And the great thing about it is, is that no matter where I move with this microphone, the sound is always crystal clear. And no matter how far I'm from the camera or how close I am to the camera, this microphone allows me to be inside without getting that echoey noise that you get from a boom microphone like the Tackstar. So I'm gonna switch back to this to continue the taping so that you can hear how much better the sound is with this one. So I've now switched back to the Boya, to the wireless microphone. Um, I've got the receiver hooked up to the camera strap and I actually pulled out the wire so you can see the wire and everything. And this is the transmitter here. Uh, the transmitter has power button on it. It has a pairing button on it. So what that does is if the wireless receiver and the transmitter are not communicating, you hit pair on both of them and they will actually sync up. Um, the other thing that it has on the receiver is a gain. So you can actually increase the gain on it. Now, this is why I like this microphone, and this is exactly why. Not that you would ever do this, but if I happen to go back here, and I happen to start working on this computer over here, or if I need to get something from back here, or if I need to turn around back here again, I can do it, and the sound is exactly the same. Whereas if you were using a shotgun microphone like is on the camera earlier, then what happens is, is that you would notice the sound would get muffled and the sound would get louder and the sound would get echoey and so on and so forth. That's what this one is designed to do. And it does a wonderful job with doing it. I really, really like it for that. I do not have a dead cat or a windscreen for the lapel. Um, it comes with a little foam on it and the foam seems to work very well, but I don't use this one outside all that often. I will put a link to the foam one that I, or to the um, fur one that I'm looking at getting for this. Um, I just need to remember to put it on an order sometime for when, when I order from Amazon so that I do have it just in case. Um, <laughs> I use it for teaching online because I can hook it up to my computer system, I can hook it up to a tablet, I can hook it up to a phone, and I can continue my teaching while I have my hands free and I'm not worried about where I'm standing in the room. Uh, I have used it in the van to do some editing and to do some voiceovers. Um, I've used it in the host to do some voiceovers. Uh, I've used it everywhere. So it's a really, it's a good system. So both of them have their benefits. Both of them have drawbacks. The only big drawback I've found with this one is, other than having to have the cords and everything hooked up to you, is that when I was recording in the van at one time, I was getting a lot of dropout on it. So the voice would sound perfect and then it would go quiet and then it would come back again. It only took a split second, but you could hear it. And the only thing that I could figure it out was that in the van, some of the electrical in the van was probably interfering with it because it didn't do it when I stepped outside of the van. It didn't do it in our, my house. It didn't do it in my studio, but it's done it a couple times in the van. So I figure it's probably something in the van, a charging system or lights or something that's interfering with it. Uh, with the Boya, it comes with three different um, cords. It comes with the microphone. It comes with a patch cord that I'm currently using on the camera so that it takes it from the receiver into the camera. And it comes with a patch cord that you can hook it up to your cell phone or your tablet. So it covers everything. Um, it comes with a couple different clips. It comes with a belt clip, a uh, belt clip for the receiver, or it also comes with a hot shoe clip that goes in there and you can put it in the hot shoe. Um, I use that sometimes, but I usually have my um, light in the hot shoe. 
So I've actually ordered in a hot shoe splitter. So what it does is on each side of it, it has a spot so you can put the light on one side and the microphone, or in that case, the receiver on the other side. So it takes your hot shoe from being a one hot shoe into a double hot shoe, or they call them cold shoes because there's no power going into it. So if you're looking for some good microphones, if you're looking at getting into video and you want to up your game with the sound, these are a couple that you can look into. I put the links down below. So get out there, get some great pictures, get some great video, and get some great sound. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. Thank you for watching my video. If you like this video, please click on the like button, which is the thumbs up button. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please click on the subscribe button and then click on the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified when any new videos are uploaded. Thank you and have a great day.